közösségi energia útkereső fórumot ugye azért szervezte a Magyar Természetek Szövetsége és a Földbarátai Európa, mert a 2021-ben az EU irányelvek átültetésével megszülettek Magyarországon is az első jogszabályok a megül energia közösségek működéséről, és elindultak az első kísérleti projektek, amelyek a közép-kelet-európai régióban elsőként kapnak támogatást az EU kibocsátás kereskedelmi rendszeréből, ugye az LTS-ből. Ezzel kapcsolatos tapasztalatainkat osztjuk meg a hazai és a közép-kelet-európai régió érdeklődőivel. A programban először az Európai Közösségi Energia Koalíció tagjai által összeállított Közösségi Energia kézikönyv kerül bemutatásra, ugye a Földbarátai Európa, illetve a Reszkóp EU bemutatásában. Ez egy gyakorlati útmutató, hogy hogyan kell, vagy hogyan lehet lépésről lépésre létrehozni egy energiaközösséget. A magyar nyelvű változat összeállítása is elkezdődött, ennek terve és bemutatásra kerül kollégám Kovács Bence által. Ezt követően az első hazai kezdeményezések hozták meg a támogatásokkal kapcsolatos tapasztalataikat, az ezekben rejlő lehetőségeket és kihívásokat. És a harmadik részben pedig két csoport lesz, egy magyar csoport, illetve egy angol nyelvű csoport, tehát ott nem lesz tolmácsolás, hanem ugye mind a két csoportban a támogatásokkal kapcsolatos tapasztalataikat, ezekben rejlő lehetőségeket és kihívásokat fogjuk megbeszélni. Ezért itt a ugye új kapcsolatokat is ki lehet majd építeni a harmadik részben, a résztvevők is kérdezhetnek, és ugye értem szerint a magyar csoportban magyarul zajlik a beszélgetés, a régiósban pedig angolul. A Végül pedig a, a kis csoportos beszélgetésekből természetesen visszajelzés is lesz, tehát a, a mind a két csoportnak a, a beszámolóit meg fogjuk hallgatni. Uh, ugye az első csoport uh, a magyar csoportnál uh, Fabok Mártontól, a, az angol csoportból pedig uh, Dimitris Cekerisztől. És hát természetesen ugye a, a rendezvény végén egy összefoglalót fogunk adni, tehát további lépési lehetőségek, következtetések témában. Köszönöm szépen, és akkor fel is kérném Dimitris Cekeriszt a Földbarátai Európától, és Szárát Eselét a Reszkóp EU-tól, hogy tartsa meg előadását a kézikönyv bemutatásával. Yes, so good morning everyone. First of all, és speaker view-t kérünk elnézést, csak annyi, hogy jobban lehet az előadást majd. Congratulations for um, organizing uh, this event to um, uh, everyone involved. And uh, yeah, have to say also to Bense for his efforts uh, to uh, actually organize that. We will be together with Sarah Taslet from Rescu presenting the Community Energy Guidebook, um, and um, I will be sharing my screen. Um, and before we start, we would also like to uh, thank. Uh, the European Climate Foundation, because we have been working um, under the funding and we have been able to produce this material uh, with their support. So I will be sharing uh, my screen right now. So just give me a minute. So yes, uh, Community Energy Pathfinding Forum. So uh, we already um, introduced a bit ourselves. So moving on to the next slide. Um, So I work as a climate justice and energy campaigner for Friends of the Earth Europe. And um, I also coordinate the European Community Power Coalition. And of course, feel free to get in touch either by email, you can see my email there, or in Twitter. So if there is anything that you would like to discuss um, uh, after uh, this event, um, I would be happy to do it. And uh, also my colleague, Yes, hello, good morning everybody. My name is Sara Tashle. I work for Rescue PU, which is the European Federation of Citizen Energy Cooperatives. Um, Rescue PU represents uh, around 1,900 energy cooperatives in Europe uh, and jointly represent uh, 1,250,000 citizens. Uh, so that's in a nutshell who we are uh, together with, uh, we are also part of the community uh, power coalition, um, like Friends of the Earth. 
Uh, me, myself, I work for, I joined Rescue PU uh, four years ago, and ever since I work as a communications manager. So I'm in charge of the overall communication uh, of the organization. Uh, you also see my contact details there. So if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me. Giving back the word to Dimitris. Thank you very much, Sarah. So uh, moving on, uh, a few words about what we do as a, a coalition, community power coalition. So we're talking about a diverse network of more than 40 like-minded organizations across Europe. Um, they're representing and participating with um, uh, energy cooperatives, cities, local authorities, um, renewable uh, energy industry, uh, legal experts, other NGOs, and uh, the main the main idea, the main cause is to promote the development of citizen and community ownership, uh, as you can see here. So our activities run um, have basically three main um, core um, um, dimensions. The first is the advocacy work, the communications part, and of course the capacity building. Perhaps um, if you have uh, seen our um, um, recent developments and what we have been doing, we write letters to policymakers from the commissioners to the um, uh, vice president of the commission and so on about things that are related with uh, our work. Um, and of course, upon agreement within uh, the members of the coalition. So I uh, think it's uh, Sarah will yes. uh, explain. So one, yeah, one of the things we did and, and also what we will be presenting today is uh, together um, with Friends of the Earth and also Energy Cities, um, all member of the Community Power Coalition, we wrote uh, this publication, the Community Energy uh, Guide, a practical guide to reclaiming power. Um, this, uh, we will, I will present it later uh, very quickly to you, and I'm really happy to hear that it will also be translated uh, soon in Hungarian language, uh, because it was already said in the, in the, in the introduction, this is really uh, a go-to guide with very practical tips, uh, sharing the experience of other uh, energy communities in Europe uh, as well, uh, showing best practices. Uh, and it's really a, a go-to guide if you want to start your own energy community. So it's now available in uh, seven languages already. Uh, so English, French, uh, Spanish, Czech, Polish, Portuguese, um, and Greek. Uh, and soon we will also have it uh, in Dutch and then hopefully also in Hungary. Uh, looking forward to that. Yeah. Dimitris. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah. Uh, yes, it's a valuable resource. So the the idea behind uh, the creation of such an initiative was um, due to the fact that we actually wanted to capture uh, some or much of the learning and wisdom that has come from those that um, already have been implementing those kind of solutions that they have been working hard and they have already learned. So it's also a way to transfer knowledge between uh, different actors or prospective actors that would like to be involved in um, the um, just energy transition through their participation in energy communities. And the main, um, the three main uh, organizations that are behind this book uh, are Friends of the Earth Europe, Energy Cities, and um, uh, Rescue EU. So um, someone might ask why work on community energy? This is also part of the book. So um, we have more or less gathered the 10 main reasons uh, to start or join a community energy project. So, of course, the first one refers to uh, stop the climate crisis, which is accelerating, is that the community renewables help redirect money from fossil fuel industry um, uh, to renewables. It can reduce energy poverty in your um, uh, area if you implement the solutions. So energy communities have the ability to implement those kind of solutions that actually tackle real social issues that exist in um, all European countries. 
Of course, you have the opportunity also to get to know better people from your community, to strengthen the ties between uh, the participants and to actually know them uh, much better by producing your own renewable energy. At the same time, it helps educate people on the issues of energy, climate, and democracy, since we're talking about democratic participation in the uh, energy communities. And the benefits are allocated in the local level. So it keeps basically the money locally within your community. At the same time, you have the ability to show other communities what is possible uh, to do and to create, let's say, a new paradigm um, in this procedure of uh, the energy transition. And all this effort leads and contributes to create a more local and a more circular economy. All in all, through this effort, you will be basically building the kind of the world that you want to see in the future by tackling all those major crises and challenges that we are actually experiencing right now. Um, next slide, um, my colleague Sarah will refer. Yes, so, so this is it. Eh? So this, here you see the cover of the publication. Um, in total, it has 26 chapters. It has many uh, inspiring success stories from all over Europe. Um, and also it has uh, some links to additional resources because of course we know it's, it's a publication but there are so many um, organizations already working on this topic. Uh, so we found out there is uh, way more to tell about this uh, to, to share about this topic. So that, that's why we uh, added all these resources. Uh, next slide, please, Dimitris. Um, so this is a bit uh, how it's structured. Eh? So it has six uh, main pieces um, and I will take you briefly through them uh, one by one. Um, yeah, next slide. So um, the first part of the book uh, is really uh, giving the context eh? why, and Dimitri has already explained it a bit, like why, uh, why are we doing this? Why is it important um, that citizens uh, and their communities uh, really uh, have their yeah, stake in the, the energy sector? Um, and, and why are people actually setting up these uh, type of organizations? Um, so usually it starts uh, from uh, a problem. Eh? We are uh, all dependent on fossil fuels. So it's, it's a reality uh, on one hand, uh, people want more cleaner uh, energy, but also uh, uh, we see that the money flows out of our community. So it's, it's a small a bunch of big companies that benefit financially also from, uh, from the energy. Um, and and uh, we wanna keep that money more locally. Um, so, that's a, 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 some people, uh, neighbors or community, they uh, take together the initiative to tackle this problem, to, uh, to respond to that uh, societal problem. Uh, what we also see, and we dedicated a chapter around is that uh, sometimes uh, it's not the citizens that take the initiative, but it come from a public player, so from a local authority. Next slide, please. Um, the second part of the book really uh, explains the, all the different uh, forms of community energy. So um, you have, there is many possibilities in terms of legal forms. Um, and it's also really, um, yeah, the, the context really matters here. Right? Like in some uh, countries, you will have certain legal forms in others you will have other. Um, what is important to mention here is be creative, like think of the possible uh, legal forms. They exist in your context and see if it fits. It's really about the how, the how here, eh? the, the business model behind the legal form and not the form itself. Um, so what is important to emphasize is that it's important that in all of these legal entities, uh, there's three uh, main stakeholders that can participate, of course, citizens, uh, but also small and medium businesses and local authorities. Mm -hmm. Uh, third part of the book is really about um, the organization, like who starts this energy community and um, 
like I can start from my own uh, experience. My cooperative, the cooperative I'm part of, uh, was founded when I was uh, still uh, a toddler. But um, so that's a long time ago. But it started with a bunch. It's Eco Power in Belgium. It started with a bunch of very enthusiastic uh, friends that wanted actually to uh, renovate a water mill and produce their own electricity. So it started with a small group, and that's that's that's. What we see often, it starts with a small bunch of enthusiastic people, and then it grows. Uh, so uh, maybe a small tip, uh, we, you don't need to involve the whole community at once. You can start with some enthusiastic people with a small group and grow from there. Um, in the book, we also talk about group dynamics, very important uh, in energy communities. Uh, but also, if you have then your energy community, how can you keep the group together? How can you keep people involved? Uh, and then when you started, when you maybe have your first energy project, it's also good to think about how to then involve the wider uh, community uh, in your uh, project. Next slide, please. So yes, then, so you have your group of people, you wanna start your energy project, uh, and then you have to choose uh, which activity you will do. Eh? Um, so um, maybe it's not only, it's of course uh, energy, the, the production of renewable energy is important, but it's also good to emphasize it's not the only possible activity. So energy communities, they are active in a very broad range of uh, energy related activities, such as uh, the distribution of energy eh? you have, um, uh, there is an example in Germany, for example, of an energy cooperative that actually owns the grid. Uh, so that's possible. Um, you also can think of the supply of energy, uh, energy efficiency, like energy savings measure measures. But you also have uh, energy communities that really work with the topic of energy poverty. Um, yeah, name it all the different transport and mobility. So all the different uh, activities. So it's really wise to choose uh, an activity or a couple of activities. And also there it's, it's important to think about your context, what is relevant for my community. And it's even something, even something you could ask uh, the community, like what are you interested in? Maybe it's e-car sharing, or maybe it's more like putting solar panels on the roof of the local school. So also really depends on the local context. Um, then the next chapter, of course, uh, if you think about renewable energy, uh, you need to choose uh, the technology we will work with. Eh? Um, and what we see from experience is um, starting energy communities really one, and that's also logical, they want to have their windmill. And that's that's really cool, and because a windmill, of course, uh, produces a lot of uh, renewable energy, but it's also fi from a financially speaking point of view, uh, a, a really good investment. Um, but sometimes, also here, it depends on the context. It's it's easier to start maybe also small uh, with some solar panels uh, on the roof of a municipal building, for example, um, and then and then grow your organization. So it's also um, yeah very important to choose uh, the technologies and also in the book, uh, all the different technologies are explained, so it gives you a bit more information. Next slide, please. Then this one is 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 uh, very important uh, in my my opinion. So we wrote a chapter on how to make this all happen, and we see uh, I went through it very quick. But it's of course a journey that is not easy. Huh? It's it's there is a lot of barriers, uh, both organizational, but legal, administrative barriers. So you have a lot of uh, barriers that you will face when setting up an NG community and, and getting your first project going. Uh, so therefore we thought it was wise to also share the experience from others. Uh, so um, in countries also where it's only now uh, uh, starting, we believe it's very, very key to share what others have been facing in the past uh, to, yeah, to, to avoid, maybe you don't have to go to the same uh, problems anymore. So that's why in this chapter, we really made a list of the, the barriers and, and challenges. And if I'm correct, uh, we will uh, discuss this also in this session today uh, to talk about this financial uh, barrier uh, in, in, in the breakouts or in the in the later session today. Uh, so I'm really curious uh, to see what are your barriers in your uh, context. Um, voila. Uh, next slide. I think that's you, Dimitris, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you very much, Sarah. So um, following the um, implementation, the adoption of the Renewable Energy Directive, which is also currently under revision 
there have been some new rights for communities. So there has been a big fight previously in order to be able to have those uh, provisions that um, gives the right for people to be part of, to citizens, to be part of a community uh, energy project. So those new rights comprise uh, uh, from um, that the citizens and communities are recognized as actors in the energy system. They are explicitly given the right, um, this is article 22, if I remember correct, the right to produce, store, consume, and sell their own renewable energy. Governments are entitled and must create an enabling legal framework in order to support citizens to be part of this process. They must, at the same time, simplify the administrative proceedings for citizen and community projects. So not to make it too bureaucratic, they need, you need to have a robust, concrete, and simplified um, uh, procedure. At the same time, they must assess the barriers and potential of community energy. And this has to be done before the creation of the enabling legal framework in order to establish the correct one. So those are the main characteristics, the main rights right now. So those rights, um, we have every um, right and every reason to demand them in order to be implemented in our regions, in our um, uh, areas, through our work in the community energy. And I have to say, I'm also part of an energy community. It's not so long back, but still, it's a new effort. Um, and I'm really happy about, about it. So summing up, uh, Sarah. You are muted, Sarah. Thank you, sorry. Um, yeah, and we wanted really to finish this presentation uh, with what Dimitris just said, uh, like uh, it is important. Uh, we, we know the, that we have those rights now uh, given by Europe. And we also know, I'm not going into details, and Dimitris knows better, by the way, but the transposition process is not going that good or that smooth in every country. But still, it, this was groundbreaking. And so this right that citizens uh, were given uh, is really something you can, you can keep in mind and, and hold your government to account. Um, you, Europe has given you these rights, so you can demand them. Um, so this is really uh, what we want to encourage you to do is make use of those rights, uh, read a book, uh, hopefully soon in Hungarian, or reach out uh, to, to, to the Community Power Coalition or other organizations working with community energy and, and do it. Just uh, uh, launch your energy community um, it's not that easy, but you will manage. Um, voila, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope we kept the time uh, as we should. So uh, thank you again for organizing this and looking forward for the next uh, presentations. Thank you very much as well to uh, Sarah. Thank you. Bye.